if you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The enemies of your life, they will be disgraced physically. They will be disgraced all around. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Your enemies will cry your cry today. <laughs> If you are saying amen, say better amen. I came this evening to plant fire for your enemies. I hear me, I hear me well. Your enemy will go with trouble they cannot finish. If you are saying amen, say better amen. This evening, God will put victory in your hand. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Congratulations. Please get seated. God bless you. Engaging the power of the Holy Ghost for conquest. I'd like us to understand that you don't talk about conquest without confrontation. You must need be confronted before you talk of conquest. Where there is no confrontation, you don't talk of conquest. Where there is no battle, you don't talk of victory. But I want you to understand, every day is a battle day. Like we said on Wednesday, arrows are flying regularly, day and night. Both spiritual arrows, physical arrows, are flying daily. And Papa said, the best form of defense is offense. So it's of no use saying, I'm not looking for anybody's trouble, though, so nobody should look for my trouble. You hear me? Whether you are looking for trouble or you are not looking for trouble, trouble they come. So you must get ready. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> David said that dark places of the earth that are filled with the habitations of cruelty. When they plan hurt, when they plan evil, they go to dark places. Places where they will not be seen. And thank God for technology. They can be using WhatsApp to be planning you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Oh, you, you don't agree with me? <laughs> but I will show you a more sophisticated WhatsApp this night. Jesus said you shall tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. Say thou shalt tread upon serpents and upon scorpions, and they shall not do what? Hurt me. You don't trample upon them by wishes, you trample upon them by spiritual actions. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There are enemies whose mission is just to make sure that blessing doesn't stay in your life. Whose assignment is just to see that you are, you are crying. The moment you are crying, they are happy. But whoever is waiting for your tears will be disappointed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That is why you need the empowerment of the Holy Ghost to guarantee the fulfillment of your destiny. Why? Whether you agree 
whether you like it or not, there are forces who are out to make sure that God's plan for your life is aborted. God's plan for your life is stopped. And if you do nothing, you have licensed them to stop it. So empowerment is not wished. You consciously prepare for it spirit, soul, and body. Anytime you are on the move to secure empowerment, your flesh reacts. Because your flesh, like I said on Tuesday, carnality is an enemy of destiny. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Nobody till Jesus come will be able to fulfill God's plan and purpose for his life with the carnal nature. Scripture says it's an enmity with God. So it fights the plan and purpose of God. So if the spirits must empower you, then you must line up for the conditions. You must line up for the conditions. Please let's read Galatians chapter 5. We read that scripture in our morning devotion. Let's take it before we enter. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Take it from verse 16 please. From verse 16, sorry. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. There are two works. Either you walk in the spirit or you walk in the flesh. And these two are calling for your attention regularly. Either you walk in the spirit or you walk in the flesh. You cannot blend the two together. No wonder. Reading through that scripture, I say, the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh lusted after the spirit. And these two are contrary against each other. So that you do not fulfill the will of God for your life. And this is where Satan has hosted a war for you to make sure that you remain perpetually carnal. And the more carnal you become, the more destiny is frustrated. The more carnal you become, the more destiny is frustrated. So engaging the Holy Ghost in prayer is putting to work the power of God to nullify the mysteries around you. Naturally, many can't account for their misbehavior. Why am I even behaving like this? Do you know, after they must have finished exhibiting mumulity, they now go back and say, what came over me? It's the spirit of mumulity. Why did I do this thing? What just happened to me now? You can't know it. So whatever will disqualify you from stepping into the plan of God for your life, experiencing the realities of redemption, that is why the Holy Ghost we need to take vengeance. Many don't like that word vengeance. But I'm going to break it down by the grace of God with the little time available. God is a God of mercy. He's also the God of vengeance. God has many nature. He's a God of goodness. He's a God of kindness. He's a God of mercy. But his mercy does not cover wickedness. The psalmist said God is angry with the wicked every day. So God hates wickedness. And he hates wicked activities. 
much as his love is, his love does not cover wickedness. He deals with it. Jeremiah 20, understand? Jeremiah 20, understand? For I had the defaming of many, fear on every side, report say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my hurting, saying, peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. Look at verse 11 now. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. You are not saying amen. Yeah. They shall be greatly ashamed. Yeah. For they shall not prosper. Yeah. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Yeah. Please say amen. amen. But O oh Lord of hosts. Thou triest the righteous and seest the reins in their heart. Let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee. Have I opened my course? When human forces gang up against you, they are calling for vengeance. The Holy Ghost has one principal mission for us. He has the ministry of vengeance. Follow me, oh. The Holy Ghost has the ministry of what? Vengeance. All that happened to Jesus, the only thing was say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. I like what Apostle Suleiman said. He said, it's only Jesus that has the power to pray that prayer. I hear one say now. But now they know what they are doing. So he said, if you touch me by mistake, you will die by correction. It's only Jesus. After, after that, and did you hear where they prayed that prayer? Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. It never happened again. Some people are surprised. It's only Jesus that could pray that prayer. Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And that was why when he got, when he was reading uh, Luke chapter 4, when he got to the day of the vengeance of our God, he closed the book. He said, no, my assignment is not this side. The ministry of vengeance started with the Holy Ghost. That was why when Ananias and Sapphira misbehaved, he didn't say, the blood of Jesus have cleansed you, so you are forgiven. He said, drop dead. Somebody is confused. You are confused, are you? You better know it now. Let's read it. Isaiah 61. Because the way you are looking at me, <laughs> as if I'm saying something that is not in the Bible. Isaiah 61, let's look at it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive. And the opening of the prison to them that are what? Bound. Go on. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the, the, and the day of the vengeance of our God. And to comfort all that mourn in Zion. Now let's go back to Luke chapter 4. Reading from this. From verse what? Eh? 18. Let's take a look at it from this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken 
hearted to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to the, to the blind to set at liberty them that are what? Bruised. Look at the next verse now. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Continue. And he closed the book. Is it your Bible? No, open your own. Open your own. And he did what? Close the book. Why? That assignment was not for him. He didn't come for vengeance. That was why when Peter pulled out his sword, he said, no, this is not time for sword. Pull it back. This is not the time to pull your sword. Put it back. The person that will show them sword will soon come. Master, with all what they are doing, say we should allow them go and say, put it back. Allow me to finish my assignment first. Uh, the baby is laughing at you. Vengeance is the principal mission of the Holy Ghost. Hear this and hear it well. God's power is not only to make things happen, it is also to undo the wicked. And whether you like it or agree with it, without vengeance, God's purpose for my life and for your life cannot be established. So desiring to see God's plan for your life established is not only for, for you to say, Father, show your hand. Father, show your hand. It will require some element of vengeance. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. I want us to be reading together so that we can be seated. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. It's fully set. So if redemption must become a reality in my life, if redemption must manifest, if the real work of Christ must gain expression in my life, there must be need for vengeance. That is why you must be angry with the oppression of the wicked in and around your life. The Holy Ghost also executed vengeance upon Elimas the sorcerer. Who is a sorcerer? A, som a sorcerer is someone that is making enchantment. Making divination. But scripture said there is no enchantment against Judah. Neither is there divination against Israel. A sorcerer is someone that is saying things that are not real. Things that are not true. Things that cannot be justified. He said, "Any man the sorcerer be blinded for a season." Was he blinded or not? Why didn't he say, "Receive Jesus now and be free"? Father, I ask for your mercy upon Elimas. Have mercy on him. Have mercy on him. No, Elimas did not need mercy. What he needed was vengeance. He needed to be taught a spiritual lesson. Hear me and hear me well. If your enemies are not taught this spiritual lesson, they will execute more wickedness upon you. Write it down, I said so. Today is what? Write it down, I said so. So after exhortation, 
vengeance was enforced. And the reason for the vengeance is to comfort all that mourn in Zion. People are coming to church with heavy hearts. People are enduring hardship. They are just managing to go by. There are difficulties all around them. Attacked by wicked forces. Unseen powers. There are forces that are vowed with their mouth. They say, I will teach this person a lesson. I remember in one of my stations, the sister just right, cried and came to meet me in the office. Somebody told her that you go see. And they know that that person is a terrible person. So that you go see. You know when an enemy tells you you go see, you will have sleepless night. Two of us. With annoyance, I, tell, I told her, go back now to that person as I'm looking at you. Go back and tell her that your pastor say, you two, you go see. I won't forget that day. She came back with the person that told her, you go see. Pastor, sorry you. Sorry. She said, you say I go see. I say, yes. You go see. And I meant it too. Because if she tells her you go see, you don't know where she will go and present her name in the night. Are you around saying now? I say, you go see. Thank God you have come. You go see. She knelt down. In tears. I say, I know me now. I led her to Christ immediately. Are you wrong saying that? Huh? I say, if you, if you dare open your mouth before again. He said, I know I'll talk again. No, I'm going to come to this church. You tell me I go see. In the day, in the night, I will be pursuing you. I will be invoking all the eight graces upon my life against you. Let me see how you will escape. One anointed deacon one day was oppressing one widow. <laughs> so the widow came, I now sent for the deacon, you know, said, uh, who are you to even talk to me? I should just take my mouth out of this matter. I said, me? He said, yes. I said, ah, deacon, me? He said, pastor, you can't do anything, no. I said, you are finished. I say you are finished. That was all. Guess what? In the realm of the spirit, all the places where he was getting money that was making him swell like puff puff, block. All his big big cash got grounded. He now went to meet my master, Pastor Nitiri. Said that he didn't know what he did to Pastor Tonio. That he should, he should talk to him. My master knew he has heard. Hear me? As at that time, I was a copra. You understand what I'm talking about? I was a copra at that time. You may understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I knew my level. I made sure his nose touched ground. So, when my master said that hey, I should come, I come, he just laughed. He knew he has messed up. He told him to kneel down and apologize. I said, Dickin, your pride brought you down. And I wanted to let you know, in the realm of the spirit, I am your senior brother. I senior you away. 
The wife was crying. Kata, they come out. Tear, they come out. I said, Madam, keep your tears away. Your husband brought you into this condition. Hear me? Some people need to learn lessons. We may be age mates, but never grace mates. When God told Moses, tell Pharaoh to let Israel go, say, who is this I am? He was, he was turning Moses around, turning Moses around. Then now God made a pronouncement. Hear it. He said, I know Pharaoh will not let Israel go except by a strong hand. He said, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and I will smite all the firstborn. Did God do it or not? What do you call that one? Wickedness. He said, if you don't free my son, I will kill your son to free my son. That's Jehovah Almighty talking of. God descended heavily upon Pharaoh. The scripture said that night there was wailing. There was weeping. There was crying. And Pharaoh was urgent to let Israel go. By the vengeance that will take place this night, your terrible enemy will let you go by force. a night adventure it was not a daybreak then i said oh, yeah, um, something has happened so no in the night scripture say at midnight god struck so they now began to wake up please you people are leaving now now not tomorrow morning you are going on this night you are going your enemy must let you go today yeah. if you are saying amen say better amen Whoever has been tormenting you, whoever has caged your name, whoever has caged any issue in your life, I speak for from this altar of vibration, vengeance will strike them. The vengeance of the God of Oyerema will strike them. The vengeance of the God of Oyerema will strike them. I will not let Israel go. God said, okay, you will let them go by vengeance. And I'd like you to hear this. The last day church is a church of vengeance. It's a church of vengeance. And that's why Every time we talk about vengeance, you don't need to frown your face. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So the last day's church started with vengeance in the upper room. And do you agree with me that if it was in the time of Jesus, Ananias and Sapphira, they wouldn't have died? Do you agree with me? You will have said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Likewise, Paul invoked vengeance upon Elimas because he was making a mockery of what they were doing. Just like people are making a mockery of your life now. Making a mockery of you. You can't mock me and escape. Whether you did it in the hiding, my, my oil will touch you. I, I'm telling you the truth. Judas mocks the mission of Jesus. Did he pay for it or not? He paid terribly. So vengeance is part of the end time agenda to ensure that every face of blessing that has been ordained for you, you enter them face by face.
So to watch your life stopped by evil men, witchcraft powers, occultic men and occultic women, is a clear manifestation of stupidity. The psalmist said, O Lord, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. You hear me? God never manifests vengeance until you demand for vengeance. He does not. He said, we do the very thing that I hear you say. If you don't demand for it, he will not do it. So if your life is tormented by witchcraft, by wicked oppressions, by satanic gang up, it is time to demand for vengeance. I want you to hear this. God is the holiest God and he's also the killer God. He said, I kill and I make alive. He's your savior but he's the killer of your enemies. He blesses, he also curses. Does he curse? He told Abraham, I will bless them that bless you. And them that curses you, I will do what? Curse. I will be an enemy to your enemy. I won't forget what one of my privileged spiritual father prayed for me. He said, whoever dares you, let our anointing strike them. Whoever troubles you come under the vengeance of our prophetic rod. And I'm seeing it happen. Even without me saying anything. God blesses. He also curses. So you need vengeance to end your hardship. You need vengeance to end your marital suspension. You need vengeance to end satanic delay in your life. You need vengeance to break the siege that has kept you and your family. Oh, I just remember something now. One young man, he was the only survivor of his family. His father had plenty lands. He's from Africa. He cried to me one Sunday as we are finished. In fact, the team of this month is the same team that particular month. He cried to me, he said, look at what is happening. I'm now a fugitive in my own land. In fact, I have escaped well, because they have planned to kill me. Not that I saw it in dream, they told me physically. I said, you are going to do something for me now. I said, I'm going to bless this oil for you. As I bless this oil, I want you to go and pour it in one of the lands. Guess what happened? He traveled after Sunday service. As he, as he dropped, he didn't go to the family compound so that nobody will see him. He went straight to the family land. I said, you are not to pray any prayer. I finished all the prayer. He just went and poured it in. And entered moto and came back. In less than one month, 13 persons died. They now called him for settlement. I told him, don't go anywhere. One is still remaining. That one that was remaining was struck by a mysterious plague. I say from this altar, God will plague whoever is after you. That one that was plagued was the one that now invited him and told him everything that has happened that his hands are off. So that God can have mercy on him so that if he dies he can go to heaven. Guess what? They left all the land and said they are not doing it again. For this is a people robbed and spoiled and all of them snared in hole and none saith restore. In case you don't have anyone, there is one now. 
I said there is one now. I said there is one now. Every trouble of your life will go into extinction. Whoever has been fighting your life and your destiny, vengeance will strike them today. Rise up to your feet. You are going to pray. You have only five minutes for this prayer. Oh God of vengeance. Execute vengeance against every enemy of my destiny. Whoever has vowed that I will not marry, let your vengeance strike them. Whoever has vowed that I will remain poor, whoever has tied me financially, let your vengeance strike them. Whoever has vowed that I will not give back, let your vengeance strike them. Are you ready to pray? Lift up your voice and pray. God of vengeance, arise for me. Let your vengeance strike every terrible enemy of my life. Every trouble of my destiny. Every enemy that has vowed not to let me go. God of vengeance. I demand your hand of vengeance upon them. Nekotekus isatata. Retuli iklaro de brusata. Nesudu eratene ezuta. Zeklo bebrediza. Nekrotetoriza. Lekrehi tolaza. Rekota, rekota, rekota. Elikuna ho sikutabo soto. Holy Ghost. Execute vengeance for me. Against every terrible enemy of my life. Against every terrible enemy of my destiny. Merodunu Fusekete. Ilado Dore Kutale Aleta. Every enemy. Hidden enemy. Fighting God's plan and purpose for my life. God of Vengeance. Holy Ghost. Execute vengeance upon every stubborn pursuer. The enemy that has found not to let me rest. Holy Ghost. Execute vengeance against them. Nekuta, Lerota, Zekuteto, Rihando, Neruski, Isa, Zekusiso, Neres, Empradiata. Whoever is behind my misfortune, Holy Ghost, execute vengeance against them now. In the name of Jesus, Naredebos, 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 Ikatole Husata, Naredebos, Sekotaba, Baba, Baba, Whoever. Is behind my stagnation. Whoever is behind my hardship, Holy Ghost, let your vengeance strike them now. I command vengeance upon them. I command intense punishment upon them. Evil men, evil women, ganging up against me, against my destiny. Against the plan and purpose of God for my life. Against my family. I invoke your vengeance upon them. Holy Ghost. Execute vengeance. Upon every terrible enemy. Nekoteros. Isaza. Melikatosa. Zeloteriata. Iraklehi. Sonosiata. Peyo. Dusanate. Zekuteriata. Lift up your voice and pray. You must come out. That affliction must end. That delay must end. Reku Zikuke Pretete Zitutale Retoni Abeze Zekotalata Ranzezanete Lakotope Rebedebedebe Whoever has tied anyone rope Whoever has caged any destiny, any family, 
any business, any career, whoever is using your picture to shoot arrow of miscarriage against you, Holy Ghost, execute us now in the name of Jesus. Likanaros and Pedereros Zatusa Lero Tapalis Likrepeli Areta in Sutunu Ekaka Lekata Zekota Baba Radabalaba Rekotelia Renose Nerose Zegolava Rabados Zegolava Rabados Zegolava Rabados Zegolava Rabados Zegolava Rabados any man or woman not working with agents of Satan against my life, against my wife, against my family, against my assignment, I prophesy vengeance of death. I prophesy. Vengeance of death, killer God, Holy Ghost, slay them, slay them, slay them. Raniato, Ensada, 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 Ekoterota, Zikuteriaba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of us know this is arrow? Let me show you where it's in the Bible. Zechariah chapter 9. We'll read it from verse 10. And I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and shall speak peace unto the hidden and his dominion shall be from the sea even to sea unto the rivers even to the ends of the earth verse 11 as for thee also by the blood of the covenant i will i have set forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water turn ye to the stronghold ye prisoners of hope even today do i declare i will render double unto thee now see it when i have burned judah for me fill the bowl with Ephraim, and raised up the sons o zion against thy son o grief and made thee as the sword of a mighty man look at verse 14 and the lord shall be seen over them that is the blood coming upon you and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning and the lord god shall blow the trumpet and shall go as a wild wind of the south the lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue with sling stone and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine and they shall be free like bow as the corners of the altar as you partake of this communion as this blood comes upon you the arrows of god's vengeance smite your enemies as the blood touches the earth Whoever is your troubler, whoever has found not to let you rest, I prophesy vengeance against them. A sister pray this prayer. Maybe so, the Holy Ghost wants me to say this. Whoever is behind my misfortune, Holy Ghost, execute vengeance against the person. She prayed this prayer. No prayer point. So this was just the prayer point. Whoever is behind my misfortune, Holy Ghost, execute vengeance against the person. She continued the prayer. Her mother-in-law to be, supposed mother-in-law, came and had the prayer and said, Mapiki, stop this prayer. Stop this prayer. This prayer is not a good prayer. Now she went and told the husband, that's her son, that this prayer that your wife is praying is not a good prayer. 
tell her to stop. The husband told her, fire prayer. Fire the prayer. She continued the prayer. In less than one week, precisely seven days after, guess what happened? Vengeance struck. She began to swell. Swell like pop off. My Peking, forgive me. It was already late. My Peking, forgive me. It was already late. Before you know what's happening, she took Emirate Airline and went to hell. What did I say? Emirate Airline to her fire. Whoever is behind your misfortune, mark my word. If I am sent by your Yedeko, vengeance will pick them up this night. If you are saying them and say better ever, whoever is behind your tears, whoever is behind your struggle, whoever is behind your disappointment, let vengeance hit them today. Holy Ghost, you are the confirmer. This is your flesh and this is your blood. As we partake of this communion and the blood of sprinkling, execute speedy vengeance for us. Every terrible enemy, let no one escape. Say amen like a believer. It is done.